let's pivot for a moment to talk a little bit about um, the the amount of psychological trauma that exists in the patient with lower back pain. And I'm, I'm thinking very specifically even about some of my own patients or friends who have been in the throes of lower back pain. And um, if, if nothing else, Stuart, I take a great degree of comfort from the injury, the third injury that I had, the one in 2000, because it lasted so long and because it was so debilitating and because I'm here today without pain, my confidence around small recurrences is so high that I don't tend to awfulize about it and work myself up. But I have great empathy for a person who doesn't have that knowledge. And instead, I don't know how to help someone sometimes because I can't tell what is mind and what is body at this point. And I suspect that there's a significant interplay. So can, can you speak more about this phenomenon and what those of us who want to help these patients can do? I am certainly much more conscious of the point you're making now than I was 30 years ago. Absolutely. I'm going to start with a little story, but I, th th this happens very often. You mentioned earlier how MRIs don't show you the mechanism of pain, and I can give all kinds of reasons why. But let's, let's take this patient. He came to see me, and uh, he said, uh, hi, doc, I hear you're different. <laughs> um, I've got this pain. Yeah. I've, I've been everywhere. I went to the pain clinic. They gave me narcotics, and now they say the pain is in my head. I can live with the physical pain. I cannot live with someone telling me the pain is in my head, because that means I'm crazy. And if I'm crazy, I don't deserve to live. You've got two weeks, and in two weeks, I'm blowing my brains out. Now, there's a heavy psychosocial challenge and a little bit of a story of what the system does to people and and it's not unusual for someone to come here suicidal so i said all right uh you don't appear to have pain right now and he says no i don't and i said okay what causes your pain and he said well it's when i do a certain movement that i get a flash of pain and it feels like someone has broken a beer bottle and have ripped open my hamstring muscles. It's awful. And I said, oh, can you show me the pain? And he said, what? You, you, you want me to show you how I create the pain? And I said, it's the only chance I have to understand it. I said, you've been to 15 different clinicians. Has no one ever asked you to show them the mechanism of your pain? Has anyone ever touched you? He says, no. I said, well, it's the only way I know. Peter, I put on my instrumentation, which was muscle EMG over the torso, the glutes, etc. We put on this fine motion monitor, 3D motion spine monitor. And then I said, all right, let, let, let's, let's see what causes this. So he stood there and he did a very weird thing. And he said, all right, well, here you go. And he wound himself around in a circle like this. And when he got to 10 top dead center, oh, now, at that time, I heard like a little cavitation, little pop come out of his back. And that was the trap of the sciatic nerve. And he was in a bad way. You know, I, I laid him crawling on a table, tried to give him a bit of decompression. And he went home and I said, I know exactly what the mechanism of your pain is. Here's what you should do over the next three days. But I want you to come back. But promise me you aren't going to do anything silly remember what the threat was hanging over us. He said, I promise. I called him that night. I called him the next day just to make sure. Then he came back and I said, I know exactly what your mechanism is. As And, and here's what the data showed. As he was winding himself around, he was using muscle. Muscle is stiffening and stabilizing. It's centrating of the joints. 
And as he got to top dead center, he shut all his muscles off. He completely relaxed. And then there was a little sheer translation or a clunk. And that's what we heard. And that's what trapped the sciatic root. Mm. I said, okay, you have no pain. Push my fingers out. Harder. Good. Hold that. Now talk to me and keep talking to me with that controlling. And we coached them through this in, in a minute. Very simple. I said, oh, keep the tone now. And we're going through. And as he came to top dead center, you could see him. Ah, 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 ah. I said, we're there. Do it again. Hold on. Keep control. He didn't clunk. Now, it took him about four months to wind down the ache. But he never had another clunk or a trap. Ten years later... He brought his daughter to me, and uh, I saw her for back pain, and he brought me a case of beer. Hmm. And uh, and uh, he said, I said, uh, you know, I did my one-year follow-up with you, but, but how have you been? He says, fabulous. I said, did you ever get another episode? Never had one. Now, some people will think that that's a, a, a fantastic, impossible story. Pete. After that one coach class, and we gave him, he was so coachable and he got it. He understood. He was a mechanical mind. You know, he never had another acute episode ever. And uh, so think of a, a suicide case from the medical system not having a sufficient evaluation procedure to really get at what the mechanism of his pain was to a point where they defaulted and said, We've tried everything with you. It's not working. Therefore, the pain is in your head. Now, think of the psychological uh, anyway to, to, to coach him. And the key was to prove to him immediately that he had the ability. It's just he had to be shown how. So it was a process of understanding the mechanism, giving him a strategy to address the mechanism, and the psyche just changes. It empowered him. I'm, I, may I give you one more story? Absolutely. Okay. I was giving a lecture in England, and there was a fella off to the side, and he was slumped down. Now, if you get a, a, a clinical psychology textbook, the picture of depression is this. Knees together, slumped down in that demeanor. Now, if you have a posterior disc bulge, that is not a good position to be. So there we're starting with clinical depression, feeding a disc bulge. Two don't go together. And he just sat there. And then in the break, he came over to me, a very quiet uh, spoken fella. And he said, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Do you have 30 seconds for me to tell you my story? And I said, sure. He said, I used to be a police officer. I uh, hurt my back. I went through the NHS system. Uh, the, the, they only gave me exercises that hurt me more. Finally, they gave me a pamphlet, How to Live with Your Back Pain. And he said, that book destroyed me. Hmm. What? You mean I have to live the rest of my life with my back pain and no one's ever touched me or shown me any of this? And I said, oh. And then you'll remember that. <laughs> squat procedure that we went with the with the older woman that I described earlier. I simply showed him that. And he went back and he sat down on the chair, nice and tall. And then at the end of the lecture, I went over to him and I said, how's your pain? And he stood up and he said, it's gone. And he started to cry because he realized now what the system had done to him. In the meantime, he lost his job. And he realized that he'd been stolen from, and those are his words. He said, they stole my career from me, giving me that book, How to Live with My Back Pain. Why didn't anyone show me what my pain was like you just did in 30 seconds? And it was just, I've been watching this pattern for so many years, you could see it a mile away. Anyway, those are two stories to link the mechanics and ultimately what we're trying to do is to empower people in showing them they have the ability within themselves. They just need to understand the mechanism. And most of the time, they are able to mitigate the cause and then build a robust foundation. Uh -huh.